Hello guys, thanks for joining me. Today I thought I'd show you a magazine I bought recently from my collection. It's a German publication from 1940. It says Siegeszug durch Frankreich, which translates as Victory March Through France. And it's a small, um, I guess you could call it a digest magazine. It's about 8 inches by 6 inches in diameter. In the back there is a map of France and the German invasion routes. Front cover has a German soldier looking through some field glasses at a scene, a burning scene in a French town. There's a rifle propped up there. And on the bottom it says number five out of six. So this is the fifth magazine out of a series of six. And it says Kleine Kriegshefte, 20 Pfennig, uh, which basically translates as small uh, war magazine. The front has a article about Adolf Hitler as the um, commander, the supreme command of the Wehrmacht. As you can see the script is basically gothic. Um, it is a bit difficult for me to read but I can read it. It has some um, quite nice photographs. There's a um, um, some motorcyclists making their way through a town in France. We've got a full page spread here of the German field marshals of the period. So we've got Hermann Göring in the middle there. Um, a couple of people you might recognize as Generalfeldmarschall Keitel and there's Kesselring. So, some nice photographs, anyhow. And we've got the offensive. Siva über die Somme, or the offensive on the Somme. So basically, um, they were fighting where they were fighting in World War One, 20 years earlier. Some um, armored cars on two five zeros making their way down the road. That one says in Frankreich's Herz hinein or into the heart of France. Got kind of German columns going down, the uh, bridge there being spanned, a destroyed bridge being spanned. And this one here says Kampf in Frankreich Veldon or fighting in the forest of France. There's a burning British tank down there, I think it's a Matilda or something. A German tank going through the ruins of a um, Town Wollenes Wollen wir es wagen, Jungens? Or shall we chance it, men? A German column going through a town in the uh, Somme. That one says German tanks await the um, command to advance and they're hidden behind the trees there and behind the woods there got another burning town in France there, Rouen German anti-tank gunners in action German troops making their way through another town This is an interesting um, article here. It says Sieben Briten auf einen Schlag, which translates as Seven Britons in One Go. And it basically um, tells about a Luftwaffe pilot shooting down seven um, British bombers. Um, Blenheim, Bristol Blenheim bombers, it says there. And it just goes on about the actions that he was involved in. So the um, British RAF were trying to bomb the um, German advance and they were shot down. And we got here through the Maginot Line, got German soldiers here. With the fighting against the um, bunkers. Harte umkämpfte Städten, or hard fought over places. There's a tank going through a ruined town. A burning ship in a harbor in ruin. Quite nice photographs actually. And then of course um, 
France Calipoli, um, gave up, surrendered. And we got Paris in Deutsche Hand or Paris in German hands. It's the Eiffel Tower, Arctic Triumph. This article here says Weiße Fahne über Belfort or White Flag over Belfort. And it goes on about the um, surrender of the Maginot Line. And there's one of the German mortars that they used to bombard the fortifications. And then we got um, French prisoners there. A lot of people think of the German army as being entirely motorized in World War II, but that is far from the case. All the way through from 1939 up to 1945, they used horses extensively, and you can see a horse crew here, um, supply being brought forward. In Lund there, Joan the Ark, or in the land of Joan of Ark, so that's uh, Normandy. German troops heading down, there's a um, tank there, looks like a Mark II motorcyclist there, and German troops on the Marginal Line. So combat troops. You can see it in 1939 on the Marginal Line, they were just brand newly built. The Marginal Line was only really built in the uh, mid-1930s onwards, so that was brand new when it was taken almost. We've got more German troops here examining a bunker. You can see the um, two German soldiers there. They've got um, helmet covers on. One of the uh, problems they found in Poland and in France was that the um, German helmets were too shiny. The paint was too shiny. So a lot of them put on um, various sorts of temporary, uh, temporary helmet covers um, to prevent the helmet shining. And you can see these two soldiers there. That's quite interesting. And this one here says they help the infantry. So we got the Luftwaffe Stuka up there, the armored tanks, and a big field gun. And then we've got prisoners and booty everywhere. So French troops, prisoners, we've got a um, blown up French tank. And then here we're fighting in Verdun. Uh, what looks like a SS trooper there, you can see his camouflage helmet um, cover, examining French shells. There's a French gun, in, uh, there's a German gun even in action there against the fortifications. Got German troops here writing letters home. And we got the Maginot line. You can see the damage done to the concrete. Got Strasbourg and Metz. Two German pioneers, it says they're um, sitting in front of a destroyed fortification. And then we got the surrender here of the French to the German Wehrmacht in the, as it says there, in the historical wagon. That's the wagon that the um, Germans signed the surrender back in. There. 1918 and we've got German troops here at Versailles and then it says here the erste Griff nach England or the first um, I suppose advance towards England it says there and that goes on about the Channel Islands being taken and then it gives a um, bit on the back here about who published the um, item and it's um, part of the National Socialist Party produced the magazine and there you have it so just a quick overview of my magazine that I bought recently anyhow hope you enjoyed that and as always thanks for watching and bye for now